welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Lisa, also known as La Dolce Lisa, and today I have a delicious Italian recipe for you guys, known as zeppole. Now, zeppole are typically found in Italy, especially for the Feast of St. Joseph, so for La Festa di San Giuseppe, which is on March 19th. So they are typically eaten during this time of year, and I think of them as a treat, especially for Easter time, because a lot of bakeries in Canada anyway, they tend to have zeppole for all of March and all of April, and they are so delicious guys. Now this recipe is sort of an ultimate guide because there's quite some debates in Italy and even in Canada and I'm sure the states on what is better, baked or fried zeppole. Everyone has their choice so I'm actually going to do both with the same recipe of course. Half the batter I'm going to bake and half the batter I'm going to fry so we will see which one's better in a taste test and of course they're going to be very traditional because traditionally they are filled with a delicious pastry cream and they are topped with amare cherries and they are so beautiful guys I can't wait to show you how to make them so without further ado let's get started and let's make these zeppole so to a medium pot we are adding two cups of milk I like to use 2% milk but you could even use one and then we are going to place this pot over a medium heat for a few minutes until it starts to boil in the meantime we'll work on our other ingredients Okay, now to this bowl we are going to be adding four egg yolks right to the small bowl. Next we are adding our sugar, half a cup of sugar. Now we are going to add the thickening agents. So I'm using a mixture of flour and cornstarch, but if you don't have cornstarch you could just sub this for all flour. So two tablespoons each. So two tablespoons of flour and two tablespoons of cornstarch. So I like to add one tablespoon of vanilla extract right into the bowl. And if you have this, this is optional because not everyone has this. This is just a vanilla bean paste, so one teaspoon of the vanilla bean paste right into the bowl as well. And now we are going to give this a quick mix. So we have whisked everything to incorporate while the milk is warming up. So the milk has just started to come to a bubble. Now what I'm going to be doing is placing this in a slow and steady stream while whisking. So about half of this goes in at once. And now that this mix is tempered, we can add the rest of the hot milk. Now we are going to do a swap here. Now we are adding this mixture back into the pan. So we are going to put this mixture on the stove again on a medium heat until it thickens. You have to whisk for about two more minutes or so. So I'm whisking continuously. You can literally start to feel this thicken up and that's a good thing. Can you see how thick it looks? That's perfect. So we are now going to remove this from the heat. Turn it off. Now the final step, while this is still hot, we are going to be adding our butter. I have one fourth of a cup of butter. So add the butter. I like to add a little bit at a time and whisk to incorporate. So let's switch this up again. Okay, so we're just going to press that mixture through the strainer to remove anything that we don't want in this mix. This is optional, but it takes away all of the lumps and it should make a nice creamy, smooth vanilla pastry cream. I would say this has been cooling for about five minutes or so just while I was cleaning up. Now it's time for the plastic wrap to put it over the top of the actual pastry cream. That way we don't allow our pastry cream to form a skin. So this is going in the fridge for at least three hours, even overnight if you're doing this the night before. Okay, so now we are going to be basically making the zeppole dough. This is exactly the same as a shoe pastry, basically the same pastry that you would use to make cream puffs or eclairs. So the steps are quite simple and I will be basically cooking this on the stove. So first what we need is one cup of water. I already added the one cup to this pot here. This is a medium sized pot. To that we are going to be adding the butter. I have half a cup of unsalted butter. And I'm also going to be adding a quarter teaspoon of salt. 
right into the pot. So now I'm going to be taking this mixture and bringing this over to the stove on a medium heat and I'm going to be cooking this down until it starts to bubble and then we are ready for the next step which is the flour. We are ready to add one cup of flour. So we are just adding that all at once to this mixture and we're going to be stirring continuously for about two minutes. So as you can see, the zeppelin dough is coming together. It's basically formed into a ball, which is perfect. You can see that it is cooked now. So we are going to remove this from the heat and then we can add the eggs one at a time. Okay, so I just took this off the heat. So instead of keeping this in the pot so you guys can actually see better, I'm just gonna put this into a bowl. So as you can see, I'm spreading this apart just to let all the steam out. Let this cool down for a couple minutes or so and then we can add the eggs. Okay, so I have four large eggs. They are at room temperature. Now because you add one egg at a time and that can be kind of difficult if you pre-crack them like I always do because I like to make sure I get rid of all the shells, I'm just gonna be giving this a quick whisk and then I'll be adding a quarter cup at a time. So instead of adding one egg at a time, I mix it and add a quarter cup at a time. I just find that's easier and that actually incorporates a little bit easier into our dough. And I'm going to be mixing very well after each addition of the egg. So let's get started. Quarter cup first, adding that to the mixture and then mixing very well after each addition. It might seem like it's not going to come together, but it definitely will. <laughs> So be very patient when mixing. As you guys can see, it is smooth and silky and it has come together quite nicely. The eggs are finely incorporated into the dough and we are basically ready to transfer this over into a piping bag. So now I have a piping bag. I already placed this in the cup so that it's easier to work with. This is already fitted with a piping tip which is going to be perfect for piping the zeppole. I'm just going to transfer over to a spatula and I'm going to just scoop this right into this piping bag. Okay, so now we are going to pipe our zeppole up. What I like to do is pipe this with this large star tip attachment here. So I'm going to pipe this in a circular motion, almost like a little donut shape, and then I'm going to pipe on top of that as well. So it's going to be kind of like a double layered zeppole. So don't worry if your zeppolis don't come out so pretty the first time around, you'll get the hang of this piping technique. Okay, so I have eight zeppole piped up here and I'm actually going to do something exciting because there's a big debate between what's better, baked or fried zeppole. So I'm going to do both. I'm going to bake half of these and fry half of these. Now in order to fry them, we are going to need to cut them off of this parchment paper. That way we can drop them into the hot oil. So I have four zeppole in the tray ready to be baked and I have four zeppole that I cut off the parchment paper ready to be fried. Now the reason why I like to cut them off the parchment paper after the fact is because it is much easier to pipe while the parchment paper is intact. If I were to get off four little squares, it would probably lift off the parchment paper too much. So that's what I like to do. Now, of course, these are going to go into the oven at 400 degrees for 15 minutes, and then we are going to be lowering it to 375 for the last 10 minutes. And then we are going to be keeping them in the oven for just 10 minutes after that to let them cool nicely. Now, for the frying, I will show you how I do that as well. So I'm frying the zeppelin at 165 to 170 degrees Celsius, and it feels kind of weird to be dropping them in the oil with this parchment paper, but guys, I just plop them down and literally within seconds just strip the parchment paper off with some tongs. It is quite simple. Now these will take about four to five minutes per side, so anywhere from like eight to 10 minutes and they're essentially done cooking. You just wanna take them off when they're basically golden brown. You really can't go wrong when frying these, super simple. So this recipe makes about eight zeppole and I basically fried four and I baked four. So here I have one of each to fill for you guys. Let's cut them in half with a knife with a serrated edge. This is a very delicate pastry so they should cut quite easily. So this is the fried one, nice and light and airy. Now we'll cut into the baked one. Ooh, the same, very light and airy. You can tell the difference slightly. So now that they are cut open, I have that delicious vanilla pastry cream in a piping bag ready to go. So let's fill these. Now what I like to do is I like to take some of those amarena cherries, I slip them in half, and I like to pop just a couple on the inside as well. Amarena cherries are essentially black sour cherries that are soaked in a delicious syrup. And then I'm going to just spoon on a touch of the syrup on the inside as well. Oh, doesn't that look so delicious? 
Now the lid on top and more pastry cream. So for the fried one, I'm going to fill the center with this pastry cream. And for the baked one, I'm just going to pipe little just nuggets of the pastry cream around. And of course, they need some cherries once again. So one big cherry for this one and a couple of those little half cherries for this one. And now a dusting of icing sugar to complete the zeppole. Just spoon on a touch of the syrup. Okay, which one do I try first? I think I'm gonna go in with this beautiful fried one. <laughs> this might get a bit messy, but I'm just gonna go in for a quick bite. Mmm. Wow. Mm. That is delicious. <laughs> now let's try the baked one and then I can tell you which one's better. Mmm. Oh my god. I don't know. Mmm. This is so hard to say. Do you want to try? I'm going to get a second opinion from my sister and she's going to let me know which one's better. What's better? Maybe fry? Fry? Uh, I was almost thinking baked. I don't know now. I don't know. Wow. Okay, guys, we're very undecided here because I was almost leaning towards the baked and Jules was <laughs> almost leaning towards the fried. So we really don't know what's better. Maybe you guys can try these and let me know. They're both amazing. Yeah, I just feel like either way, whether you want to bake them or fry them, I think that they'll just be delicious. So guys, that is how you make a zeppole, a zeppole di San Giuseppe, these delicious Italian pastries filled with amarena cherries and vanilla pastry cream. And they are so good. I really hope you give this recipe a try. I will, of course, have a blog post on ladolcelisa.com. So please check the link in the description box for more information and for the written recipe with some pictures and things like that. So guys, thank you so much for watching. And if you did enjoy this recipe, please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos like this in the future. So I will be eating this off camera and I will see you again next time. Happy San Giuseppe for next year because I of course am late. Or happy Easter. If you like this recipe. <laughs> you guys do it. <laughs> she took the fried on. <laughs> you want some? You want some?